Hello, I'm Jeff Fuller. I'm a retired Army Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel living in Haymarket, Virginia, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction uh, to my novel, my first novel, uh, Joint Task Force Phoenix and American Odyssey. Uh, this was just recently published in, in July, and uh, I'm having fun promoting it and uh, and and uh, introducing it to uh, friends family and uh, strangers. So basically this novel grew out of my frustration with the, uh, back in 2014 with the Obama administration. I'm not gonna get into it too much, but basically they had a feckless foreign policy uh, reflected by the way today with the Harris uh, and uh, Biden, if, if you can say it, call it that administration, and, uh, but worse today. And uh, so what um, I was concerned about the fact that they were um, feeding the Iranian nuclear program with billions of dollars, both in cash on airfield strips uh, with C-130s full of cash and also with uh, billions of dollars in, in oil sales. And uh, there were other things that were going on, but basically, and then the war in uh, their, 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 the war in, uh, against the Islamic State was a pathetic mess with uh, lawyers, young lawyers and, uh, and uh, White House staffers making decisions on whether or not a Air Force pilot was gonna bomb or not, uh, with many aircraft returning with the full loads of bombs from their missions. And, and th there were other things, but that was basically what was getting. And then the, the beginning of the woke military was starting to appear, although not nearly in the form that we see today. So there were just things about that, and I thought, well, why not tell a story about this in a way that the average uh, uh, citizen might be able to get a, get some insight into the uh, the communications, discussions, the dialogues, and so forth that are going on. So we dress the good guys in the form of the blue forces, the bad guys in terms of the red forces, the media in the form of the fourth estate, and uh, and then the political actors like the president and so forth. So all those uh, perspectives are addressed in this novel as we move from the beginning, which is the infiltration of a recon recon team into uh, Syria, to the end, which is the successful culmination of this operation. So let me introduce you to the uh, protagonists. It's Lieutenant Colonel Harris Norton. He's a squadron commander of the second squadron of Delta, SFOD uh, Delta. And uh, he, his dad was a Vietnam vet. He was way, raised in North Carolina. And uh, uh, he started out in special forces and then went into uh, Delta uh, selection. Uh, he lost his wife to cancer, became the second squadron commander. And he's at the time of the start of the novel, he's been for four months on this JTF mission with several cancellations. His significant other uh, is Chief Warrant Officer Cindy Clark, who I'll introduce now. Now, like uh, Colonel Norton, Cindy Clark is formed out of um, uh, a composite of uh, women I've known in the military, one in particular uh, that. Uh, whose name I can't mention, but uh, she's a member of the Army Intelligence Support Activity, which is a uh, sensitive operation about which I'll say no more. She was raised by her mom. Her dad was killed in Vietnam. She's in the story here, a JSOC senior intelligence analyst. She lost her foot to an IED blast in Iraq. She's famous in the special ops community as an operator and an intel uh, guru. Uh, she was rescued by Harris Norton on an operation a couple of years ago, which is how they became acquainted. Um, she's a martial arts instructor, and she's providing intel support to this operation from JSOC headquarters. Well, there's a number of players in this story, and I highlight here the good guys on the left and the bad guys on the right. Uh, and um, provide you sort of a, uh, my visualization of these characters. Um, I decided to do this just for fun, uh, and it was fun doing it. 
Um, most of these were created from artificial intelligence based uh, graphics uh, program that I managed to acquire. And uh, I've already introduced you to Harris uh, Norton and Cindy Clark. Uh, uh, CIA agent Dottist Lips O'Neill uh, is a famous intel uh, analyst for the CIA and a key player in this operation. Uh, Master Sergeant Flowers, recon team leader, is the uh, uh, an important player in this operation and uh, is built off of a character uh, that I uh, served with in Vietnam. Matt Knox is a the assault uh, force commander, and he's also a composite. Uh, Colonel David uh, uh, West is a JSOTIF commander, and uh, Major General Sid Krakow is a JSOC commander, and he, uh, Krakow is built off of a character, uh, a, a, one of my mentors that I served with, Major General Sid uh, Shacknow. Um, in terms of his personality and some of his mannerisms. Uh, on the right, uh, Chief of Staff Cheryl Harper, uh, President Mary Jefferson, uh, Mary Jefferson's lover and national security advisor, Amanda Navid, the ISIS uh, commander, Maharis Mohammed, and the, the bio cell leader in the United States, John McCarthy, uh, uh, who is, goes by the uh, name uh, Hamid. So I prepared uh, just a short introduction to uh, different phases of the uh, novel uh, for your amusement. I, I don't expect that I would uh, uh, provide all of these in a talk, but I'll provide them here and uh, make them available. So that starts with the infiltration, uh, hope in the face of disaster in a briefing in the White House Situation Room. Plan B, the alternative plan from the Blue Force perspective where the bad guys get a vote. Phoenix Rising, a blue perspective uh, at a Jordanian intel site. Uh, and then Endgame, red-blue perspective uh, featuring the drone launch site north of the ballpark. This is a uh, phase, an early phase of the story when the infiltration is going down and the president is uh, being briefed in the situation room by the national security team that's read in on this very closely compartmented operation. Uh, I call it hope in the face of disaster at this stage of the story. And you see here, uh, Mary Jefferson, and a glimpse inside the uh, aircraft that was uh, used for the infiltration. The chairman of the G Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral William Massey, confidant of President Jefferson and the first gay four-star flag officer that was out in the open, briefed the Situation Room on the infiltration phase of the operation. Madam President, gentlemen, ladies, Lieutenant Colonel Norton and his recon team are approaching their exit point just north of the planned landing zone in Syria. If you look at the screen, we are streaming video from inside the 737 aircraft, and the screen on the right shows the real-time infrared satellite tracking of the aircraft. The room went silent as a surreal figure in the back of the aircraft raised his hand with two fingers extended and then moved to his left and opened the cargo door. Then there was a flurry of activity in the cabin as the eerie scene, bathed in red light, played out. It seemed like only a moment or two had passed before a large object was pushed out of the door, and then in seconds, the jumpers were gone. The national security team watched the video feed as the lone remaining crewman turned to the now empty door, rendered a solemn salute, and closed the cargo door. This is plan B, the blue perspective, where the bad guys get a vote from page 66. The recon team is under attack by Islamic State units after the White House had informed an ISIS source 
of their operational plans. Sky Flowers and his two operators engaged the ISIS terrorists who had flanked them using their silenced FN-308 rifles. He saw a flash from his right that he recognized immediately as an RPG launch. The rocket hit 10 feet away and lifted him in the air. It seemed like he was airborne for a long time before he landed headfirst on his rifle. Sky came to came two moments later. He looked to his right and could see that his two buddies were dead. The right side of his body was peppered with shrapnel and sand from the blast. He recognized that the automatic tournament in his tourniquet in his right leg had been activated. He shifted his rifle and re-engaged the terrorist who was running to circle his position. He checked his leg and saw that it looked like he had shrapnel and a couple bullet wounds. Sir, two KIA and I have a couple rounds in my leg. Lieutenant Colonel Horton heard another blast and then silence on the team radio. Sky, hang in there. Drone is a minute away. He watched the drone feed as it approached Sky's position. He could see that Sky was surrounded by half a dozen jihadis. One had a weapon to Sky's head and looked up in the air, shaking his fist at what he assumed was a high-flying drone. Harris watched helplessly as they loaded Sky in a Humvee and took him off to the compound. He knew that they must have knocked Sky out with an RPG, or he would not have been taken alive. This is from Phoenix Rising, Blue Perspective, page 90. Agent Datest O'Neill, interrogation of the leader, Mohamed Mohammed, at a Jordanian intelligence site. She was using sophisticated intelligence, software and drugs approved for specifically for this operation. As promised, when the software detected deception, Agent O'Neill grabbed his shackled hand and smashed his pinky finger with a hammer. O'Neill saw the confusion in his eyes. The only thing that will save you is the truth. How did you test the virus? With resignation in his eyes, the commander of ISIS said, we, have a, we had a warrior drop a single eyedropper of the virus into a Christian village well in Iraq. In 10 days, he sent a message that he was dying and that most of the village, over 200, were already dead. How did you learn of our attack on your meeting place? Oh, Anessa, you will not like this. We have an agent in ACAR who is a political ally, ally of the president and her chief of staff. He sent a message a week ago that the chief of staff called him to the White House to tell him that the president had ordered an attack on ISIL leadership in violation of her pledge to ACAR and the American people to never allow U.S. boots on the ground in Syria. Who is the ACAR agent? His name is Dr. Majar Kawaji, ACAR spokesman and former chair of the Islamic Studies uh, Department at Boston University. This interrogation led the JTF to organize an off-the-books effort to neutralize the bioterrorist cell in view of the fact that the uh, major organizations of the government could not be trusted in, as far as FBI and uh, other aspects of the government. Endgame, both red and blue perspective, page 185. The bioterrorist cell leader, Hamid, or AKA John uh, McCarthy, watched the drone continue towards the Washington National Stadium. The drone turned slightly to the right and he took over from the autopilot, but the drone was not responsive. It continued to fly just west of the ballpark and over the river. In a panic, he hit the spray command. He felt a sharp pain in his shoulder as he saw holes appearing in the rooftop. 
He heard the whoop whoop of a helicopter and looked up in disbelief as his iPad slipped from his fingers. He looked up to see one of the Delta shooters appear out of nowhere. The Delta warrior grabbed McCarthy around the neck in a tackle that took him down hard. He looked up into the face of Lieutenant Colonel Harris. As promised, I'm uh, giving you here links to uh, the Facebook page on the left. And that's where I intend to kind of keep things updated uh, and any discussion in response to questions. Uh, you can order the uh, novel on Amazon or other uh, booksellers. Um, this is a link to the Amazon page. If you do buy it from Amazon, I encourage you to review it favorably. If you don't like it, send me a message and tell me I screwed up. But uh, I'd rather uh, get nice reviews on Amazon because I want to be successful with this novel so I can afford to write the follow-on one. And finally, the third um, uh, QR code, it leads to a page where I just provide a summary of the characters involved so that uh, you can kind of visualize them and so forth. And I'll, I don't expect to change that a lot, but it'll be something that you could, uh, you could print a copy of it if you wanted and uh, put it inside the book cover uh, for yourself and anybody else that reads uh, the novel. That's it. I hope you uh, read with uh, fun, and uh, I hope it does uh, bring an occasional tear uh, and uh, cause you to hold your breath occasionally and get a feel for uh, the world of special operations uh, from the perspective of a old special forces guy. And by the way, I'm not a Delta operator, and I don't claim to be. Um, I have been around them. I have friends that have served in that awesome outfit. Uh, and I don't, um, when you're reading about the equipment and the material in this, understand that I create that uh, based on my knowledge of what's available in the current market, uh, not on any particular inside information. So if you're a terrorist hoping to gain some insight into our operator's uh, techniques and so forth, uh, you can probably save yourself the trouble uh, because uh, I only touch on that in the broadest sense. So I hope you enjoy it again. Uh, comment if you have a, uh, any, any, and do so preferably on the Facebook page. Thanks so much.